The Witcher Polish, is an action role-playing game developed by CD Projekt Red and published by Atari, based on the novel series of The Witcher by Polish author Andrzej Sapkowski. The story takes place in a medieval fantasy world and follows Geralt of Rivia, one of a few traveling monster hunters who have supernatural powers, known as Witchers. The game's system of moral choices as part of the storyline was noted for its time-delayed consequences and lack of black and white morality. The game utilizes BioWare's proprietary Aurora engine. A console version was to be released in late 2009 using an entirely new engine and combat system and entitled The Witcher, Rise of the White Wolf. It was suspended, however, due to payment problems with console developers' widescreen games. Two sequels were released, The Witcher 2, Assassins of Kings in 2011 and The Witcher 3, Wild Hunt in 2015. Gameplay There are three camera styles available in The Witcher, two top-down perspectives, where the mouse is used to control most functions, and an over-the-shoulder view, which brings the player closer to the in-game combat, but limits visibility. In all three views the controls can be changed to be primarily mouse-focused or a combined keyboard and mouse approach. The combat system in The Witcher represents a different gaming experience from most RPGs. Players can choose one of three fighting styles to use in different situations and against different foes. The fast style allows for faster, less damaging attacks with a greater chance of hitting faster enemies, the strong style deals more damage in exchange for a slow attack speed, and a lower chance to hit faster enemies, and the group style features sweeping attacks best used if Geralt is surrounded. The player can switch between the styles at any point. Both of Geralt's main swords also have distinctively different combat styles from other weaponry, and serve specific purposes. The steel blade is used to fight humans and other flesh and blood beings, while the silver sword is more effective against supernatural monsters and beasts against some of which steel may have no effect whatsoever. With precise timing, the player can link Geralt's attacks into combos to more effectively damage enemies. Alchemy is a major part of gameplay. The player can create potions that increase health or endurance regeneration, allow Geralt to see in the dark, or provide other beneficial effects. The recipes for these potions can be learned through scrolls, or by experimentation. Once the player creates an unknown potion he can choose to drink it, but if the potion is a failure it will poison or have other harmful effects on Geralt. Each time Geralt drinks potions they increase the toxicity level of his body. This can be reduced by drinking a special potion or by meditating at an inn or fireplace. In addition to potions, the player can create oils used to augment the damage done by weapons. They can also create bombs for use as weapons in combat. Neither can be created until talent points have been allocated into the corresponding skills. A time-delayed decision consequence system means that the repercussions of players' decisions will make themselves apparent in plot devices in later acts of the game. This prompts the players to put more critical thinking into making each decision, and circumvents a save-reload approach to decision-making. It also allows the game to have a unique approach to replay value, as the consequences resulting from the player's decisions can lead to great difference in the events that take place later, and ultimately a very different gameplay experience than in prior playthroughs. The nature of the options faced when playing the game rarely falls into the typical black and white morality present in most computer RPGs, and the players often find themselves choosing from the lesser of two evils rather than making a clear choice between good and evil, a situation more reflective of real-life morality. <laughs> Plot The game tells the story of Geralt of Rivia, a witcher, a genetically enhanced human with special powers trained to slay monsters. The witcher contains three different paths, which affect the game's storyline. These paths are, alliance with the Scoia'tael, a guerrilla freedom fighting group of elves and other non-humans, alliance with the Order of the Flaming Rose, whose knights protect the country of Temeria, or alliance with neither group to maintain witcher neutrality. In the game's opening cutscene, Geralt is tasked with curing King Foltest's daughter, Princess Ada, of a curse that transforms her into a feral monster. Years later, a group of witchers find an amnesiac Geralt unconscious in a field and take him to the witcher stronghold of Ka'ar Morhen. As he struggles to recall his memories, the castle is attacked by a gang of bandits named the Salamandra. 
The witchers and sorceress Triss Marigold battle the invaders, but the mage Azar Javid and the assassin Professor escape with the mutagenic potions that genetically alter the witchers. The witchers head off in different directions to find information on the salamandra. Geralt heads south to Vizima, capital of Temeria and where Foltest reigns. On the outskirts, he meets a magically gifted child called Alvin and learns that Vizima is in quarantine. To obtain a pass, Geralt defeats a hellhound plaguing the outskirts, but is arrested upon trying to enter Vizima. Geralt volunteers to kill a monster in the sewers in exchange for his freedom from jail and emerges in Vizima's temple quarter. With the help of a private investigator, Geralt pursues multiple leads on the salamandra and witnesses rising tensions between the Order of the Flaming Rose and the Scoyatel. After a confrontation with Azar Javid and the Professor, Geralt is knocked unconscious and saved by Triss, who invites him to a party of high-standing officials in Vizima's trade quarter. There, Geralt meets Princess Ada and gains several new leads on Salamandra's business front. As the Order and the Scoyatel grow bolder in their efforts, Geralt finds out more about Alvin's powers and visions while taking down Salamandra drug operations. Geralt finally assaults a salamandra base in Vizima with the help of either the Order or the Scoyatel and kills the Professor, but finds himself surrounded by royal guards after escaping. Ada, who has been forging royal edicts in Foltest's absence, declares that she must kill him to conceal her treachery, but Triss teleports him to a village on the other side of Vizima Lake. Geralt and his friend Dandelion find some unsteady peace while taking care of Alvin, helping with problems surrounding an ill-fated wedding, and negotiating between the village and the inhabitants of an aquatic city. Eventually, however, the conflict between the Order and the Scoyatel threatens the village, forcing Geralt to finally pick a side or make enemies of both factions. The scared Alvin mysteriously disappears in a flash, and Geralt and Dandelion decide to sail back to Vizima to end Salamandra. Foltest finally returns and retakes control of his castle, but at the same time civil war has broken out. The Scoyatel have caused an uprising, and the Order of the Flaming Rose has responded by killing non-humans with little discern. Depending on which side Geralt took in the previous battle, he must either help the knights or the elves in the battle or assist nurses in a field hospital. He also deals with Ada, who has suffered from a relapse of her curse, after which the Grateful King discloses clues about Azar Javid's location. Storming the main Salamandra base with his allies, Geralt finally kills the evil mage, but is shocked to learn that the Grand Master of the Order of the Flaming Rose is the mastermind behind Salamandra's mutation program. With most knights of the Order and their mutants now entering open rebellion, the king again turns to Geralt with a contract to kill the Grand Master. Upon being confronted, the Grand Master tries to persuade Geralt of his greater plan to save humanity from prophecies of world-consuming ice. The skeptical Geralt is cast into an icy wasteland illusion by the Grand Master, who bears striking similarities to Alvin. Geralt successfully defeats him and is then approached by the King of the Wild Hunt in spectre form, to collect the Grand Master's soul. The spectre warns Geralt of the impending events or fights him and disappears, upon which Geralt murders the Grand Master and escapes the illusion. In the ending cut scene, a man with a witcher's vertical pupils attempts to assassinate Foltest, but is thwarted by Geralt, leading directly into The Witcher 2, Assassins of Kings. <laughs> <laughs> development Prior to CD Projekt's involvement, Metropolis Software which CD Projekt bought in 2009 and closed in 2010 had obtained an undisclosed license from Andrzej Sapkowski for his novels in the Witcher series, around 1997. However, due to several other projects that the studio was involved with at the time, and concerns from their publisher Topware about the material's international appeal, the project never got farther than some initial media and a playable level. CD Projekt later approached Sapkowski for rights for the series. They were able to secure the rights for about 35,000 zloty, approximately $9,500 from Sapkowski, who wanted all the payment rights up front, rather than through royalties, even though these were offered to him. In a 2017 interview, Sapkowski said that at the time that he had no interest in video games, and was only looking at the deal from a financial benefit standpoint. <laughs> Game engine The Witcher is powered by a heavily modified version of the Aurora engine by BioWare, enhanced for single player. 
A number of changes have been introduced to the original engine, some of them are described below. One of the most important features of the Aurora engine is that the world is designed exactly as the developers envisioned, rather than using a tile-based system. All the environments are developed in 3DS Max and then exported into the game engine. As a result, developers can create unique game worlds, rather than recycling the same tiled objects over and over again. CD Projekt's version of the engine supports lightmaps generated in 3DS Max. Shadows generated this way are reported to look more realistic, and provide better game performance. The modified engine also includes texture paint, a special tool that allows the developer to paint the environment using custom textures. This enables the developer to make the game world truly unique. New realistic skyboxes and water effects designed specifically for The Witcher were added to the engine. The natural light during various phases of the day is realistically altered, and the day and night transitions serve to enrich the game's ambiance. The weather can dynamically change from a light drizzle to a dark, stormy downpour accompanied by thunder and lightning. Other important changes include motion-captured animation, improved physics modeling, new mechanics and combat system. Additional modifications include the introduction of portals and the inclusion of additional graphical effects glows, advanced dynamic shadows, blurs, etc. Topic: <laughs> Localization variations. All the female portrait cards shown after Geralt's sexual conquests were censored, retouched to a more modest standard. For the U.S. release version. The in-game Dryad was also reskinned so her hair covered more of her body in this release. Some dialogue between characters is shortened in the non-Polish language versions. Lead designer Michal Made has disputed claims by fans that this was due to the sometimes crude language, but that the decision to edit down dialogue occurred because of production-related concerns in game development. Proofreader Martin Pagan noticed this shortened version during his work and writer Sande Chen confirmed that it was not due to censorship. Fans have theorized that it may have been done for voice acting cost savings, especially since much of the vulgar language has been retained. Topic. Console version On 29 November 2008 a video covering the console version of the game was uploaded on the internet. On 2 December, CD Projekt Red officially confirmed that The Witcher will be ported to PlayStation 3 and Xbox 360 consoles and released as The Witcher, Rise of the White Wolf. It had been built from the ground up for widescreen games DaVinci Engine and featured a host of differences. According to CD Projekt Red senior designer Jakub Stylinski, the game featured a new interface, redesigned boss battles, new music, a smattering of new models, and a redesigned character development system, in addition to an entirely new action-oriented combat system with enhanced AI, additional motion capture animations and the ability to directly control Geralt's defensive maneuvers. CD Projekt also confirmed that Rise of the White Wolf would have featured downloadable content. On 29 April 2009, it was announced that the production of the game had been halted due to late payments from CD Projekt to the French developers of the console version, Widescreen Games. A release from CD Projekt's CEO Michal Kaczynski stated that payments were delayed due to widescreen games not meeting development deadlines, additionally stating that technical incapability created a risk of missing planned quality," and that CD Projekt had ended their association with the company. Release Enhanced edition At Game Developers Conference 2008, CD Projekt Red announced an enhanced version of the game which was released on 16 September 2008. The significant changes featured in the enhanced version are over 200 new animations, additional NPC models and recoloring of generic NPC models as well as monsters, vastly expanded and corrected dialogues in translated versions, improved stability, redesigned inventory system and load times reduced by roughly 80%. In addition, all bugs are said to be fixed and the game manual completely overhauled. 
There are also two new adventures available to play through, side effects and the price of neutrality. A new option is to mix and match ten different languages of voice and subtitles. For instance, players can now choose to play the game with Polish voices and English subtitles. Other featured languages are Russian, Italian, French, Spanish, German, Czech, Hungarian and Chinese. Aside from the game enhancements, the Witcher Enhanced Edition includes a making of DVD, a CD with 29 in-game soundtracks, another CD with inspired by music, the short story The Witcher from the book The Last Wish, a map of Temeria printed on high-quality paper, and the official strategy guide. In addition, a new and enhanced version of the Dijini Adventure Editor is on the DVD with the two new adventures. The game updates, as well as the box's extras, are available as a free download for owners of the original version who registered their game on the official forum. Furthermore, old save games are compatible with the enhanced edition. According to CD Projekt co-founder Michal Kaczynski, the enhanced edition required a $1 million investment, and the company had shipped 300,000 copies of the retail version worldwide as of December 2008. Topic. Director's Cut CD Projekt released a Director's Cut version of the game in North America on 31 July 2009. It is equal to the enhanced edition available to the rest of the world, but without the censorship applied to the North American version. The company has since released an official uncensored patch that makes the North American version the same as the international for those who have purchased a boxed version of the game. Topic. Reception The game received mostly positive reviews. The game's cumulative score stands at 81 out of 100 on Metacritic. Michael Lafferty from GameZone gave the game 8.8 .8 out of 10 describing it as deep, immersive game that will "...ask you to think and make choices, not just hack and slash your way to glory." The Witcher's cinematic intro was nominated for the 2007 VES Awards in the category of Outstanding Pre-Rendered Visuals in a Video Game and the game's soundtrack was voted Best Fantasy Game Soundtrack in the 2007 Radio Rivendell Fantasy Awards. In 2010, the game was included as one of the titles in the book 1001 Video Games You Must Play Before You Die. <laughs>